there's a secret to building your unstoppable AI enhanced R environment. And I will show you how by hooking up R and R tools, firing up cursor AI for mind blowing shortcuts and supercharging your setup with essential R packages. Also, you can crank out some maps like a pro. By the end, you will have the ultimate dev stack that transforms your productivity. Ready? Let's dive in. The purpose will go to our browser. Then we're going to search for download R for Windows. And then we're going to take this cron link over here and then just click here on download the latest version of R for Windows. Then find this icon like here, then right click on it and select run as administrators to start the setup to your uh, language then you need to accept the user agreement select the folder where you want to uh, install your r version and after that you can also select some uh, optional arguments over here but essentially you just need to click several times next uh, and uh, towards the end of this one you will also be asked if you want to create a shortcut if you want to also it's very important to uh, save the version in the registry like i did here and then this is going to actually start an installation which is going to be done literally in a few seconds the second most important step after you download and install r is to download and install r tools which is used for compiling certain packages such as, for example, a ray shader for creating 3D maps. So we're going to head back to our browser, then we're going to be searching for R tools for Windows, and then select the first one, which is going to take you to CRAN, and uh, then over here, select the latest version of R tools to start downloading. So for the setup, we'll open asking you to choose where you want to install R tools. After you uh, decide that, you uh, simply uh, need to click next several times, uh, checking all the other options. And then this is gonna start the installation of our tools on your system, which should be completed uh, within a minute or two. Okay, so we're gonna head to our browser. We're gonna search for Cursor AI, and then we're gonna uh, take the downloads here from this first result. And then over here, we're gonna actually be downloading the version for Windows 10 11 to our local drive folder and then look for the icon that looks like this. So this is the cursor AI installation icon. And then you need to right click on it, select a run as administrator, and this is gonna start the setup on your system. You will then see this uh, window opening up for the setup and also this progress bar. You don't need to click on any next or OK button, simply wait for under a minute time and the cursor AI will be then installed on your system. Congratulations and welcome to cursor AI. But to enable R, we first of all need to install R extension. To do that, we're going to go here to the main menu, to the top uh, menu. And then if you don't see here a view option in this menu, you need to click on these three dots and then click here on view. And then within this sub menu of view, you need to click here on the extension. So simply use here as it says, control shift X at the same time. Now over here, we need to install R extension. So I'm just going to type here R. And if it doesn't show up immediately, you can also use maybe the space bar. Anyways, within a few seconds, you should be able to see here that this first one, just R extension, and then click here on install this blue button. Once you do that, it's going to install within a few seconds and uh, then you're good to go, except that you need to just go back here. Uh, you see this gear, which is called actually Manage button. So click on this Manage button. And then over here, click on Settings. Now, there are several things we want to actually enable here in this panel. So one of these things that we want to enable is that we want to have all these uh, R plots to be enabled as a part of this uh, VS Code fork. So we want to make sure that the first thing is that this uh, uh, plot is enabled. So HTTP H, uh, uh, sorry, GD plot viewer instead of the base VS code. So this is the first one. The second one, which is more important, is making sure that you navigate in this R path, you navigate uh, Windows to your R executive uh, where it's installed. So if you don't have any path here, you won't be able to use R within a cursor AI. So make sure go to the folder where you installed at first your R and go all the way to this path, this bin folder and search, you know, where it's uh, located this R executive and then take that path 
and then uh, you need to paste it over here. So this is the first one, so R path. The second one is the R term for Windows. R term for Windows should have should use the same path, but it needs to have the path to the R term dot executive file. So head back to the main menu and click on file. And then we're going to actually start coding. So click on new text file. And over here, it still does not recognize R. But if you go to the lower right corner of the screen, click on this plain text, you should then select over here R from the list. So if you set everything up, it should be showing you R as one of the options. And then after that, again, head down to the middle of the uh, screen, you will see this R not attached. Simply click on this. And once you click, this is going to activate R terminal. So you should be able then to see here that it's, uh, you know, calling R and not just that, but also installing this package HTTPHD, which in the previous step, if you remember, we quickly enabled plots to be actually rendered within the VS code. Our first step in cursor AI will be to install the necessary packages. And to do that, you can use install packages from base R. But instead of like then using that command, to install every single one, we can even go an easier way. And that is, we're going to install package Pacman. With Pacman, what you can do, you can use its function, which is called pload. And then what it's going to do for you, it's going to search within your library, whether you have a certain package installed. And if not, it's going to install it and then load into our session. So we're going to be installing here several ones. Tidyverse for data visualization and data uh, uh, science or data wrangling. This is going to give us dplyr and ggplot2. Then we're going to also install Terra package for working with raster files. We're also going to be installing here the asset package for working with vector files, so polygons, lines, and points. Geodata is quite useful because it can help us get not only country polygons, but also can get us some data such as, for example, uh, digital elevation models. Uh, or temperature, for example, OSN data is very useful for fetching the OpenStreetMap data directly into R. Ray shader for creating 3D maps. This is what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial. R stack uh, is for actually connecting to the Microsoft planetary computer, fetching some uh, cool data from there. RSI for getting satellite imagery, so Sentinel uh, and Landsat, for example. R initial Earth is a quintessential library for fetching also country polygons, administrative lines, but also some data such as, for example, lakes or rivers. And finally, tidy Terra, I find it very useful for plotting uh, Terra raster objects within in uh, ggplot2. So uh, after that, what you just need to do is you need to uh, go ahead and select actually this, uh, you know, whole chunk, and then you need to click just control enter in uh, Windows, which is then going to execute this whole code. And it's going to actually, first of all, start installing Pac-Man and then also installing and then loading all these packages into your R session. If you're interested in how you can leverage some of these or most of these uh, packages in R and start working directly, uh, fetching the data and visualizing it in R, you can check out one of my previous tutorials where I explain uh, 10 ways to use these libraries and to uh, fetch data directly in R. So the first thing that Cursor AI offers are two functionalities. If you click on Control L, you can call out a chat. Within this chat, you can actually talk with Cursor AI about your existing code, and you can ask Cursor AI to modify your code and also to debug it. The second one, which is gonna we're going to try first, is the uh, code generation option. So this one, you can start by clicking on Control K at the same time. Now, if you click on Control K in our case, this is going to actually open up here uh, a small window where you can start asking what kind of a code you want to create within an existing environment. So we're going to go ahead and ask here an AI agent. So you can see here I uh, chose Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, but there are actually more of them. And I'm going to ask it to create a simple 3D elevation map of Belgium. For example, you can take any other country using R. And I also want the code to be error free and optimized. And also I want it to load all the packages beforehand, even though we do have here all these packages. So once you actually are done writing here your code, click on generate. And this is then going to start generating in a Git fa fashion. So it's going to actually add this highlight color, meaning that you first of all need to click here on uh, on this button, which is accept, or simply click control and enter. So what this thing is going to do then, it's going to actually add this code now to your file. So you can go ahead and check out this file, what it does, but I'm going to go ahead and execute one by one. 
So what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, you know, highlight what I want to have here. And then when I highlight, I'm going to click on Control Enter, and this is going to execute the code. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, let's install load these packages as we did. Second, what this next one is going to do, it says here in this comment, get Belgian boundary data. So what it's using here is actually our natural earth uh, uh, package, and it's calling here countries, and it's calling Belgium, and it's going to return you in the SF object class. So it's going to be a vector object, simple features object. So that's the first one. In the second one, what it's going to do is going to use, as you can see here, it's called geodata. It's calling geodata, and it's calling elevation, elevation at 30 uh, uh, seconds here, degrees. So... Uh, and it's going to get for Belgium the data you need. It's going to download it to your temporary directory and it's going to mask everything that is false outside of it because this returns a tile. But essentially, this option allows it to crop any elevation that is outside of the boundaries of Belgium. If you, however, want to uh, you know, keep this, you can also you know, put here false. Anyways, uh, we execute this successfully, as you can see. So it downloads here the zip file, uh, then it unzips it and then uh, takes it uh, back into R. So this, the next one is it's going to convert elevation data to mat matrix so that a ray shader can actually work with it. And it's using raster to matrix, but it did not say here that it's, you know, we're going to be having, uh, that it's using ray shader. But I can tell you because I've used this before, so it's using ray shader. All right, after that, it's going to actually render this uh, 3D plot. And so we can highlight again, and then we can create uh, our scene over here. We have the elevation model of Belgium, but it's a bit tilted. So in the next step, I will show you how you can ask the AI agent to fix the code for you, and then you can rerun and re-render the scene in the way you really want. You can press Control L at the same time, and this is going to open up this uh, chat window on the right hand side. So what will happen next is that you need to write here your question. And over here, I'm just going to write that I want to re-render this scene and I would like to ask the AI agent to help me re-render it in a certain way, in such a way to make sure that the new scene is not tilted um, around the uh, axis, the previous one. And I also want a bit higher uh, degree angle, so something closer to 90 degree, for example. So what you need to do after that is simply, uh, you know, select here the model that you want. I'm going to just go for this. Uh, cursor simple model and uh, then just press on uh, submit after that this is what we get you can either click on apply here and apply to your uh, script of uh, choice or you can just go simply and copy and replace manually over here your code and after this we're now gonna rerun this so we're gonna highlight actually this code and after highlighting we're gonna rerun it and uh, you know check out the new render scene that we got so as we want it now, the scene is not tilted around the axis and also it's much closer to the 90 degree. So essentially the map is a bit flatter. As we successfully render the scene, we can go back to this code and then try to run these two. So the first one defines the title text 3D elevation map of Belgium. And then using this RGL title uh, 3D, it adds it actually to the scene. So I ran this and uh, I ran it successfully. So there was no error. And then the last one here, render the scene, uh, is a render snapshot. Essentially, if I run this, it's simply going to, uh, you know, render the snapshot using the existing open window of this scene. All right, this is great. But now we're going to go ahead and ask Cursor AI to help us render this uh, map as an object and then save it locally as an image file. We will use Control K to ask Cursor AI to generate a new code for us. And over here, we're going to ask specifically that we want to render this object as image in high quality, again, using Ray Shader as before. Uh, and of course, we want to also be able to save it locally as an image. Uh, and also, we want to make sure in this whole process that the shadows are also a bit softer and, for example, that the elevation is also crisp. You can actually add whatever you wish here, you know, whatever you wish. Uh, and then you can select a model. For example, I went here for GPT, um, chat GPT 4.0. And then it's actually uh, what it did uh, essentially is it changed two things for me. It changed, first of all, uh, this render uh, high quality part. And it also changed the render scene part. 
So essentially here you can, you know, you can choose to uh, test both. And this is exactly what I did here. So I first decided here to uh, re-render my scene and only then uh, render uh, the object itself. But you can also use the previous one, the render scene that we already have, and then render that as high quality image. Add, highlight this render high quality, press control enter, and it's gonna start rendering your scene and then saving it locally once it's done. Uh, so just like a short explanation of what's going up here, uh, first of all, we uh, at the at very top, we um, defined or actually the agent defined here the output file name. It's going to be a PNG file. And then here also set light direction and light altitude for your scene. If you're curious how, uh, you know, you can set these parameters, you can check out one of my first tutorials where I actually show what the specific parameters mean and how you can change them and changing them, how it uh, what kind of changes it produces on your map. And then uh, again here, it shows to have 450 samples per frame. And also for the width and height, it shows 2000 by uh, 1600 uh, pixels. Again, you can also play with any of these parameters, but you can also ask the AI agent to help you with, uh, you know, choosing specific parameters based on your preferences. And you can describe essentially what you want to achieve. All right, and here is our final map. Not too bad, it can always be improved, but the point here is that we manage through these interactions with Cursor AI to make this from the scratch. In some, I think, future iterations, what you can do is you can uh, converse even more with the Cursor AI and try to improve the color, the shading, and also the image quality.